Let me give you the overview about how the whole system works. So when we talk about a cargo van business, your number one priority is to find loads, right? And when it comes to finding loads, a lot of folks are trying to reinvent the wheel. Don't try to reinvent the wheel. You want to start with your existing clients. See, your existing clients, if you treat them well, if you have excellent service, you have business for life. We tell our clients, we have uh, we have more than 100 business clients when it comes to a cargo van and, and uh, sprinter van. And we tell them all the time to always start by treating your existing clients impeccably. If your clients are, are satisfied, they're going to give you loads. Okay, so number one source of finding loads is your existing clients. And number two, you have self, self-dispatch. The thing with self-dispatch is that you got to have time and you got to be organized. That's why a lot of folks, a lot of uh, cargo van drivers, a lot of sprinter van drivers, owner operators, they want to outsource that part of the business to, let's say, uh, a back office. They can do it so because they, they don't want to handle the dispatch themselves. But if you are organized, if you are meticulous and you have the time to actually do the self-dispatch thing, go ahead and do it. So you can actually get loads by self-dispatching. You can get loads through referrals. We've seen a lot of clients also get loads through load boards. The whole thing about load boards is, I mean, we, based on our research, and we have been studying this industry for the last 35 to 40 years, load boards are a little, they are overrated. I mean, that is trying to sell you uh, their subscription, their monthly subscription and, and whatnot. I mean, it's kind of cool to a certain extent depending on the niche and depending on the vehicle that you have. But the thing is that some industries are very saturated. Some sectors are very saturated. So load boards are just not a good, uh, in our view, of course, and we are basing this on 35 to 40 years of, uh, of research. Load boards are not really, really, really the best source for finding loads. They are good to a certain extent. So you can also find loads through dispatchers. Okay. So instead of doing the self dispatching, you actually outsource that part of the job, that part of the process to dispatchers. So dispatchers will actually help you. They'll help you find loads and they'll take care of the, the back office work. Also, everything from accounting to uh, to booking and whatnot, they'll take care of that for you. You can find loads also from freight brokers. OK, so freight brokers will help you out, get loads for you. And you can also become a government contractor so you have but the thing is we have an, an entire show that actually talks about that but so you can find loads and actually uh deliver loads for uh, for counties for cities for states and and for the federal government so this is pretty lucrative too so that's the first step when we talk about cargo van business process from a to z the first process is finding loads The second process is securing loads. So you you found the loads, right? Now you have to secure them. Now, the welcome back to the show. By the way, it's a, it's just a wonderful. Uh, it's always a pleasure to have you. You know, welcome to the family. We really appreciate having you here. So, after you found loads, you need to secure the loads. When we talk about securing the loads, we're speaking here about safety. See, the whole thing is that you, the whole thing is you have a, a smorgasbord of regulations at the federal level, especially the federal level where you have to be you have to maintain safety on the loads you are hauling especially if the substance you are hauling is federally sensitive things like hazmat or things like um, things that relate to uh, the uh, the food chain those are really or things that relate to port or airport those are really 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 sensitive okay now when we talk about securing loads you have to make sure that you have to pay attention to machinery load limits this, this is very important because one of the easiest ways to put the equip the uh, your uh, your load in, in danger is if, if you are overloading your vehicle okay so make sure that you are paying attention to that verify that slings lashings and other restraint gear are in good condition this is really important because uh, if something were to happen god forbid something were to happen if you were to be involved in an accident and uh, the insurance, the insurance appraiser sees that you did not follow proper protocol for safety. They are going to deny your uh, your claim, and you don't want that. So please make sure that you 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 have to verify the slings, lashings, and other restraint gear are in good condition. You want to check the load occasionally during transport, 
and this is important. I mean, this is something that you have to see based on the load, whether or not everything is, uh, is, is in place, right? So here you want to use your judgment. Boss, use your judgment. This is very important. Use your judgment so you can see whether or not everything is fine. Number four, you want to confirm that tie down points, binders, hooks, and clever spins meet capacity regulations. And again, here is an area where federal regulations are pretty straightforward, okay? Especially around uh, clevis pins, or the pins have to meet capacity regulations. And uh, remember, there is a, there is a, a threshold here at 3,000 pounds, but this could be different based on the states where you're in. So again, you want to verify not only that you are abiding by the law federally, but also state-wise. You want to perform regular maintenance on hoists, okay? So the thing is, falling materials from crane hoist can be exceptionally dangerous. So maintaining hoist on a regular basis can help prevent falling loads, keep the hoist in good working condition, and ensures that you know how much weight it can safely handle. This is something you have to do regularly. And don't forget to consider the center of gravity and load balance. Very important. So the step number three in our sort of uh, overview here. So first, finding loads. Second, securing loads. Third, delivering loads. By the way, just want to quickly remind everybody of today's conversation. So we're having a short convo about cargo van business process from A to Z. Everything you need to understand. Everything you need to understand. If you're if you're a rookie, you're in the industry, you're trying to get into this into this game, and you're trying to have uh, all the uh, all the info that you can get this is the video for you so finding loads securing loads delivering loads so the thing here is that when we talk about delivering loads one thing we have we have seen in our research is that never rely or don't always rely on dispatch for all the answers okay the thing is dispatchers will sometimes see things which just are not true they probably will not tell you if they're having problems in the area pre previously it only takes one error in judgment to change or cost a driver their life. So the dispatcher will go home safely at the end of the day after his or her shift, right? But that you as a driver, as the owner operator, you actually have the right to do the same. So you have to be really very clear about when we talk about delivering loads, you have to think about geography. Boss, my question to you is, have you thought about the, the, the neighborhood where you are going to deliver stuff? Okay, so sh you need to find, you need to really, really uh, be very clear about that. Let's say if you are in an unsafe area, what do you have to do? You want to notify the company of your findings, okay, via satellites or cell phone. Be sure that uh, the doors are locked. You want to stay on the main streets. Keep your cell phone handy in case you need to call 911 or take a photo. Don't stop, never stop, never stop. So you want to keep the vehicle moving if you are able to. And the thing is you want to remain calm and keep your head on straight. And the thing that we tell our client is that if you have a GPS program, you want to make sure that you are able to use it to guide, it, to guide you to the quickest way out of the area and back to the highway. Or if possible, get out of the area the same route you came into the area to avoid getting lost in a bad neighborhood. Okay, So it's all about making sure that you are planning for the unforeseeable. And take the time to trip plan. It will pay off huge. At the very least, talk with the receiver by phone before going to the area. Okay. Remember, as a driver, you are responsible for your own safety. Very important. Let's now talk about delivery confirmation. Okay. So I just want you to see the the line, the thread line I'm trying to follow here. So. I've talked to you about finding loads, securing loads, delivering loads. Now let's talk about confirming delivery. Okay. Now, how do you actually uh, take care of the whole load confirmation? Well, the load confirmation process allows you to check and confirm that the loaded stock that you are carrying is, has been loaded and actually, actually delivered. Okay. And so when we talk about this, this is really important. And you have several parties that are kind of involved in, in, in this process. So you have your dispatcher, you have uh, yourself, you the, the driver, the owner operator, 
you have the client because some clients want to they wants to be in the loop they want to know everything they want to they want to know your route and, and whatnot so and uh, if you have a free broker you also might, might want to uh, actually inform that party okay so you can see yourself in the midst of uh, a constellation of parties who are all interested in uh, the load so they want to know exactly that you have uh, delivered the the load as required and when we talk about delivery load confirmation we're speaking about not only to make sure not only making sure that the load has been delivered as per the instructions this is really important it has to be delivered on time and it has to be delivered safely let me repeat that you have to deliver the loads based on the instructions on time and uh, safely and the thing is especially if you are carrying some delivery that are, that are very sensitive uh, let, let's say you are carrying low you're carrying glass for for instance or food things that are perishable you gotta you gotta be very sensitive about time right and when we talk about confirming delivery make sure that you inform again as i said all interested parties not just one party or two parties no, no no you want to inform everybody okay and the thing is that as you progress in this industry you're, you'll be able to know exactly what kind of uh, information you, you have to provide things like receipt of the cargo a document of a title of the cargo a contract or carriage between the carrier and the shipper okay but think things like uh do we have a do we have hazmat do we have hazmat here the type of packaging that you delivered and also remember that when we talk about delivery confirmation so you got to be uh, careful about bill of lading right so are we talking about street ball street bill of lading closed ball to order ball electronic ball we do have an entire show that will discuss that but for this session just please remember that you need to confirm the delivery of the loads actually to several parties the next step in the process here is that we are talking about invoicing just want to quickly remind you that i'm having a conversation with you in today's uh in today's uh, show about the cargo van business process from a to z the whole thing the whole process from a to z okay so we've talked about finding loads securing loads delivering loads uh, co confirming delivery okay and uh, invoicing so when we talk about invoicing invoicing really is uh, critical and, and the thing is one thing you need to understand here is that when we talk about invoicing you are you need to create simple invoices to get paid that's what you need don't try to complicate things don't try to uh, have a, a long invoice whatever no I mean we have clients they have uh, one page of invoice and on that page you only have uh, one paragraph for the invoice that's what they care about like you have your business name address and phone number in the header and your logo if you have one the invoice number and date you are sending the invoice the name and address of the person or company being billed details of the job that was completed so from you have a shipper city state to the consignee city state the name of the driver the cargo van or a sprinter van number and trip number if applicable the activity completed what type of load it was and the rate that you have discussed when we talk about rates right you have uh, several op options for uh, for uh, rates you can do a rpm rate per mile you can do rate per project you can you can you can do a rate per hour rph so it really depends on uh, what kind of agreement you have with the clients but those things are discussed beforehand though before the whole before you start uh, hauling the load and remember that you also need to uh, mention where checks payable should be sent so make sure that you have your name and address okay and this is important and we have clients who actually uh, do all, all of their uh, invoicing electronically like you know they don't like they want they don't want to have anything paperwork no 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 paper invoice no nothing at all they don't i mean we have clients who do things electronically we have clients who do things only in paper we have clients who will fax the invoice to the clients after delivering the loads we have clients who do things automatically like right away after they deliver the loads some clients were for three or four days before sending the invoice so it, it really depends on your needs and your strategy here okay and when we talk about invoicing though please remember that you can do self invoicing or you can go through a dispatch service for invoicing
Now let's talk about getting paid, right? So you have uh, you have found loads, secure the loads, deliver the loads, confirm delivery, invoice the clients. Now it's about time to get paid because you, you you you're not a charity, right? So you have to get paid. And the thing here is that when we talk about getting paid, now how much you get paid is uh, actually uh, depending upon a constellation of things. It depends on uh, the number of miles. The vehicle type that you are driving are you driving a cargo van sprinter van any other type of vehicle that you're driving the size of the load market conditions for example local regulations demand patterns gas prices and whatnot so what we have seen in our research is that the larger the vehicle the longer the distance and the higher the payout so really it depends on uh, on uh, as i said on a, on a variation of uh, factors and also one thing we have seen also is that if you are transporting federally sensitive materials like hazmat or as I said before, if you haul in areas that are federally sensitive, for example, at ports or airports, this kind of uh, area, you actually have to pay more. But also the regulations are higher, though. I mean, there are certain things you can't transport if you're just a regular uh, if you are a regular owner operator, you need to have a. Uh, so some kind of clearance from the federal government okay and one thing i want to say here is that when we talk about getting paid as i said before you have four you have three options you can get paid rate per mile rate per hour rate per project okay and uh so in terms of getting paid some clients will pay you let's say uh, immediately some clients will pay you uh, in 30 days if you have a net 30 accounts with them if you have them on a net 30 account some will pay you a net 15 net 45 it really depends okay and you, and they can pay you via direct deposit not a problem and remember that at year end you got to pay taxes on those uh, payments and some clients will send you a 1099 nec form so that that's like non employee comp non employee compensation some will send you a 1099 mics miss okay depending again depending on how you structure your relationship with them if you have a business until you have business so that they don't send you any 1099 form because whatever the client pays you goes into your revenue and the revenue of the business you have to pay taxes at the at the business level or at your personal level now let's talk about freight factory this is the last step in the, in this interesting journey here so Finding loads, securing, securing loads, delivering loads, confirming delivery, invoicing, getting paid, and now freight factory. The thing here is that sometimes you have clients that basically don't pay on, on time, but you, you've got a business to run, okay? Like you, you just uh, delivered the load and the client is just taking forever to, to repay you. Sometimes it's because they don't have money or they're having financial difficulty or sometimes they just need to actually uh, they, they need to pay other uh, vendors. They need to pay other other companies. So what do you do? Because you've got a business to run, boss. you got a business to run. So what you do here is that you contact a freight factory company. OK, so this is this is really, really great. Now, let me just break it down for you. Freight factoring, which is also called a transportation factoring or cargo van factoring or sprinter van factoring may be able to help you get a handle on your business finances and credit. So here's the overview of how the whole thing works. So you submit a factoring application. So once approved, they will issue the French factoring company will issue a factoring agreement that's, that lays out the specifics of your factoring contracts, okay, including your fees. You determine the credit worthiness of your customers and approve those you, you you basically will, you will factor okay what i want to say here is that the process is very simple in the sense that you send the freight factoring company invoices that you want to be factored so they will event they will basically advance you a percentage of the invoices value and work with your clients to collect the amount owed so it's basically between 70 percent and 95 percent okay and what will happen here is that your dedicated account executive at the freight factoring company will make collection calls as needed to collect your outstanding invoices and when the invoice is paid the the company will deduct their factoring fee and return any reserves back to you and so that the uh, so you have to understand this is actually great because it allows you to streamline cash flow for transportation for your transportation needs 
Okay, so this is really good. So you were able to pay your expenses and grow your business real quick. So you, you got to think about whether or not freight factoring is right for your company. It really depends on you, whether or not your customers take a long time to pay. Is a, is a, a lack of cash flow neg negatively impacting your, your ability to grow your business? So those are really questions you need to answer. Thank you so much for your attention. I really appreciate it. In today's conversation, I was just talking to you about the cargo van business process from A to Z. So I spoke about finding loads, securing loads, delivering loads, confirming delivery, invoicing, getting paid, and get freight factory. Thank you. I will see you next time. But until then, remember, stay marvelous.